Captain Coder here, and a crew member asked, how could I create a dynamic top-down map that shows the player's current position in the world? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a solution that utilizes an orthographic camera positioned above the player that is pointed down and is sent to a render texture that is then drawn to the UI. But before we hop in, I wanna remind you that you can ask your own questions at Captain Coders Academy on Discord, or you can catch me streaming live at captaincoder.live. All right, let's hop in. I've started by creating a base Unity 3D project. I happen to be using Unity 2022. This should work with 2020 and 2021 as well. I don't think anything drastic has changed with the features that we're going to be using. The first thing I want to do is get myself a map into the scene that I can move around in that I'm going to use to create my map. To do this, I'm going to just use the simple nature pack available on the assets store. This is the low poly simple nature pack. There's a free version. There's a paid version. These are some awesome poly low poly assets you can use. I'm going to go ahead and start by importing this after you've added it to your assets you'll be able to add that into your project from the window menu, go down to package manager. And then there's this drop down here. Usually it starts on Unity registry or in project, whichever one you had selected last. We're gonna go ahead and go to my assets. These are all the assets I own from the Unity store. If I search for low dash poly, I'll find all the low poly assets I own. And in this case, I wanna find the simple nature pack. I'm gonna select import. This import dialog will show up showing all the things it's going to import. And I'm just gonna select import here to get those in. And then I can close this window. Now that I've imported all of that, I have this simple nature pack folder. Go and open that up. And then in scenes, we can open up the demo scene. I'm gonna make a copy of this. I can duplicate it on Windows using Control D. On Mac, it'd be Command D. You can also do a Control C, Control V. I'm gonna move this copy into my top assets. You'd probably wanna make your own folder for it, but this is for a simplicity demo here. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this map render demo. Double click to open that up and make sure I'm not editing the original. Great, now that we have that, I wanna go ahead and add in a model for my player that I can move around the scene with. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a capsule you can use whichever model you want for simplicity i'm just going to do a capsule i'm going to rename this to my player and then i'm going to add in a rigid body so that it will be affected by gravity it'll sort of maintain its spot on the terrain and i want to make sure that my rotation doesn't uh get modified i don't want it rolling around on the terrain. i want it to be sort of flat in there so if i were to run this it's going to have my cylinder sort of fall on top of this rock you can see my cylinder back there in the background. Next, I want to go ahead and update my camera. So I have a camera that's sort of inside of my player here. I'm going to delete the cameras that they come with. I'm going to add a camera here on my player. This is going to be my player camera. It happens to be at the center of my player. You can adjust it, but it's just going to be facing wherever my player happens to face. And I'll hit run now. It'll show myself falling, or it should. There I go. And now I'm just sort of inside of that capsule. Next, I want to go ahead and add a script that'll let me move my play around. Go and right click down here, create a C sharp script. It's going to be our player controller, like so. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Ideally, you're going to want, if you're having a physics based game, you'd want to create a much more robust player controller. I'm going to do a very simple player controller here. Where I have a speed, I can rotate the player using the keyboard controls and I move the player back and forth. So I'm going to start by creating a private float speed. This is the speed at which my player moves and rotates. And I want to access that in inspector. So I'm going to go ahead and create a serialized field. If you wanted to, you can create a public field and then you don't have to add serialize. However, I like to follow good object oriented principles. And this is an encapsulated variable. If we make it private, serialize will allow us to access it in the inspector, but other code won't be able to change this. You can use whatever you want to do for your project, but I prefer to use this principle here. In our update, we're gonna go ahead and get the input. By default in a project, at least in 2020 through 2022, we can get a simple axis here. So if I'm gonna get my X movement. This is gonna be my 
forward and backwards movement. And I'm going to, uh, this should actually be our Z movement. It's going to be the forward and backwards velocity. Uh, let me get that typed in there correctly. Z move. We're going to go ahead and get from the vertical. So this is going to be up and down. When the player presses up, we go forward. When the player presses down, we go backwards. And we're just going to update our transform here. So this is our transform is going to be our player, whatever this is attached to. And we're just going to move it by our transform dot forward. So we're going to whichever direction our capsule happens to be facing our player. We're going to move it by our Z move. This is our forward and backwards movement axis. We're also going to multiply it by the speed that we set in the inspector. I'm going to have it be default to 10 here. And then finally, we're going to multiply that at time dot delta time. This will make it scale properly. Uh, so we don't have to care about the frame right there. Very, very simple. Go ahead and save. We'll run this real quick. Once it compiles, it can come in here and we'll be able to move back and forth because our camera's inside of the player object. Our camera is going to move with us. Oh, I forgot to attach the player control. If you see here, I'll go ahead and attach it. You'll notice now I can move backwards and forwards. Because this isn't happening using physics, uh, we can actually clip through things if we're moving too fast. Let me go ahead and add this to the player outside of play mode. So now it's attached here. We can adjust the speed if we want to. Lastly, let's go ahead and add in a little bit of a rotation. So I'm gonna do this when we go left and right, when we play A and D or the left and right arrow, we're gonna do a float uh, rotate uh, speed input.get access. Uh, and it's going to be our horizontal axis. And we're going to take our rotation and we're just going to add it to the Y. So when we're, we're, we're looking from above, our Y rotation will cause our capsule to rotate. And so to do this, I'm going to go ahead and pull off the current rotation from our transform dot rotation. And I want to get this out in Euler angles. So this will translate to a vector three rather than a quaternion. A little easier for my brain to wrap around using vector threes. Our rotation, we're simply going to increase the movement, uh, sorry, the, the Y rotation by the rotate input. This is whatever the user's pressing left or right, it'll be positive or negative. And then finally, we want to go ahead and apply that rotation here. And we can translate this back from an Euler vector three into a quaternion by using quaternion dot Euler. So this is a static method. And we can take in the rotation vector we created. And so now when we press left and right, it'll actually rotate our player around in a circle. And then we can sort of navigate around in this environment here. Let's check it out. All right, so our players in here, I press left, right, left and right allow me to rotate. And then I can also move around. So now I have just a little cap so I can move around in our world. Next, let's go ahead and see if we can get a image in here for our map. What we're going to do next, we're going to actually have a, a camera placed up above the world that will be the map we want to render. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a new camera. And this camera is going to be our map camera. This is the camera that's going to float above the world looking down onto it. We're going to go ahead and switch the perspective. Rather than being a projection perspective, we want it to be orthographic. This means that it will just be a box. Notice when I change it to orthographic, it just becomes this rectangle. When it's perspective, it sort of starts at the, the center and expands out, sort of the way your field of view would. So we're going to change this to orthographic. We're going to rotate it so it's facing down towards, towards the map. We can do this, I believe it's the x-axis. Yeah, so we're going to rotate the x-axis 90 degrees and it's pointing straight down and then we need to increase the size of the view so that we can see the entire map so i'm going to go up to i think we can get there with 160 might be too much try 120 see i get most of the map and then i can sort of adjust my position here move it around until i get the whole map rendered there notice i need to move the camera up a little bit to get those peaks i'm going to move it up like so and then i'm just going to adjust it so that my map appears as close to center as I can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now I have a camera that's rendering above. I wanna take this camera and I want it to display on the screen. So I'm gonna create a little UI control where I can toggle this on and off. And I'm also gonna change 
Uh, what do I want here? Uh, solid color here. We're gonna make this black. Not 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 amazing, but we'll make it black here. And then we are going to do the following. We would like to take what this camera is showing and display it on the screen. We need to convert this to an image. We can do this using a render texture. So I'm gonna create a new render texture. So right click, create, and go down to render texture. I'm gonna call this map texture. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take this camera and we're gonna project what we're seeing here onto our map texture. I can go ahead and drop that map texture onto my map camera. You can keep this open if you right click and select properties, it'll open a new window. So if you click on other stuff, you'll still have access to it. And I'm going to drag my map texture in here as the target texture. You'll notice since my target texture is a square, it sort of chops it out a little bit. And so I might need to zoom out a little bit more to get the whole thing to display in there. There it goes. Pretty close. I'm gonna see if I can get this just a little bit better centered like so. And our map texture, there we go. We have a map texture now that is going to be our map here. So this is now an image. Default size is 256 by 256. We can increase it. If you want better resolution, you can increase this. If you don't need as big resolution, you can decrease it. But now we have a map texture here that we can put as an image on the screen. I'm gonna come into my UI. I'm gonna add in a raw image. All right, so raw image is gonna be our map on the screen here. And if I switch to 2D, we can sort of see our canvas a little bit better. I'm gonna take this map and I'm going to position it on the screen in the center. If you select where you want to pivot and you hold Alt and Shift down, you can move it to the center like so. Still have it scaled to the whole size, but I'm gonna put mine sort of in the center. I'm gonna make mine 400 by 400. And the texture I want to render is gonna be my map texture here. So now if I go to my game view, I'll have that map on the screen. All right, so wherever this camera happens to be, our map camera, that is what will be rendered onto the screen. We can do a little bit more here. I want to make it so when I move my player around, there's sort of an arrow on the map and you can see the player moving around. So let's go ahead and do that. On my player here, I would like to make it, let me switch back to 3D. I would like to put a sprite above the player that is an arrow that is gonna be pointing the direction the player is moving. And so I'm gonna actually come in here and we don't have 2D objects by default. I'm gonna just make a sprite. And by default, we don't have 2D objects when you create a 3D game. So we're gonna import that now. So in window, go to package manager. We're gonna select, we're gonna type in 2D. And this is part of Unity registry. Select Unity ready, type in 2D. We're gonna import 2D sprites. This will let us add in sprites to our game. This will be nice for doing UI stuff. Uh, it's specifically, this is gonna be nice for adding in a triangle that is going to represent the direction the player is facing and we'll be able to see that on our map. All right, so now that I have that imported, I'm gonna come over to my player. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna add in a 2D object sprite triangle and this triangle sort of ends up in a, a weird weird orientation sort of pointing up we want to rotate it so it's pointing forward here and believe again if we rotate the x-axis 90 degrees it'll show up above the player and then we're going to go ahead and scale it up um let's do 10 on the x-axis 5 let's do 10 on the y-axis 5 on the x-axis so we get this arrow if we move this up above the player and now if we look at our map you'll see that arrow there. Let's change the color of that triangle. Let's make it red so it pops out a little bit more. If we come back to our map, we'll now see we have this arrow. And if I play, because the triangle's inside of the player object, as I rotate, it rotates with the player. And now we have this arrow that allows us to move around. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and add a button that I can press that will toggle this map on and off. So I'm gonna create a new script called our map toggler. Create a new script called map toggler. And this is just gonna wait for the user to press a button. It's gonna turn the map on and off. So there's a couple things we have to do with this. Let's go ahead and open up our map toggler. I'm gonna create, I'm gonna leave update here. I don't need start, but I am gonna create a field here that's for the game object that is the map we're gonna to toggle on and off. Map like this. Once again, I need to serialize this field so that way we can access it in the inspector. Also, 
I want it to be so we can set the key. So I'm gonna add in a private key code here, toggle button. Toggle key might be a better name, toggle key. I'll serialize this as well. And then if I come back into Unity, I'm gonna attach our map toggler to the player. All right, so now our player has a map toggler. We're gonna to say we wanna to toggle the map object and the button we're gonna to press to do it. I'm gonna make mine the M key. So I can just click this drop down, select the key I want. I want M. And now in my update, I'm just gonna check, see has the user pressed that key? So if I believe it's input dot key down, yep, key down, and we're gonna say the toggle key. So if we have the key down, so during the frame that this button gets pressed, we're just gonna toggle our map on and off. We can use this using set active. So map dot set active. We're gonna find the map's current active state. So active in hierarchy will be true if it's currently active. And then we're just gonna put a not in front of this. So this is gonna say, if we are active, become inactive. And if we're inactive, become active whenever we press that toggle key. Let's go ahead and test it out, see how we did. Go ahead and run here. I believe I set it to M. Once the game comes up here, turn M, we can toggle our map on and off. Not bad, not bad at all. We can walk around with the map on the screen. Beautiful. The last thing I want to do is I want to make it so right now our camera can actually see the arrow above us. If we were able to look up above it, we'd be able to see it. One thing we can do is we can make this only displayed on this map here by adding it to a layer. So we're going to add a new layer here. Come into our layers. We're going to select edit layers. We're gonna add this map elements. So map elements should be something that is only rendered on our map and not if the player is looking at it. You can use this to add icons and all sorts of cool stuff to your map layer. Okay, so we have our map elements here um, and I'm gonna come back to my map now. Uh, sorry, my map camera. My map camera right now, it's saying to render everything and that's great, we can have that. You can also add things that it won't render. The more important one is our player camera here. We do not want our player camera to render map elements. So we just can check this off here. So let's just test out what that looks like. Let me take my camera and I'm gonna point it up. Go back to, uh, let's toggle off our map here. And then I'm gonna take this canvas, or sorry, this player camera and I'm gonna just rotate it. So our camera's point up, we see that triangle. If I make it so this camera doesn't render map elements, let's see, oh, 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 and I also have to say that this is a map element. So I selected my triangle, I make my triangle a map element. Now, I won't see it unless this is on. So you can use this to turn on and off different features that you want to be visible on your map, but not to the player in the main camera. So now if I come back to my map and I turn this on, I can still see that triangle, but my player, no matter what they do, they can't see it. All right, that's it for this demo. We were able to add in a simple map that is rendered using a render texture. We can toggle that map on and off, and we have a nice little arrow pointing in the direction the player's moving. I hope you enjoyed this demo. I hope you find it helpful. I want to know, how are you going to use this? Are you going to add your own mini map? Are you going to add a full-blown map? What are you going to do with it? I got to know. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, keep coding, keep growing, be the best you, you can be, and you are welcome back anytime. Bye-bye.